Hey guys, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is me, Shamima Shadahan, and I would like to welcome you to a brand new video. In my previous video, I spoke about the movie Mulan and how we are being brainwashed. And if you have not watched that video, I highly suggest that you go back and watch it because I feel that brainwashing is a topic that we all need to become aware of in order to stay woke. However, today I am going to dig into the topic which I ended the last video with, which was on the topic of women being held back from reaching their true potential by using culture which is fed in the name of religion. Now, the main reason I wanted to talk about this topic is because, number one, to make you aware of the fact that this is happening if you are not aware of it then to be honest you must be blessed because this is a very big problem especially in the southeast asian culture where i am coming from if a woman is to become vocal about having a dream of having to do something for herself that does not necessarily involve her children or her husband, her family in general, then she is looked down upon. She is looked at as someone who is not doing justice to her family, who is being disobedient, not just to her family members. I'm talking about being disobedient to God. She is basically not considered a good Muslim. I am specifically talking about really extreme cases. I'm not saying that this is what happens to each and every woman, but this is still happening to a lot of women, so much so that this topic needs to be spoken about. And one of the reasons why I wanted to speak on it is because I, on a personal level, talk to a lot of women who are really affected by it and the pathway they take to combat this is really i don't know it breaks my heart because i have sisters who message me saying i want to die i want to commit suicide just say anything to me and i wouldn't know who they are it might be the first time they are dropping me a message they just follow my content online and they just decide to just drop me a message saying they're feeling suicidal and to tell them anything. And when I inquire about what's wrong, what's troubling them, they say how they feel trapped living a life which they feel is not authentic to who they are. And there are other sisters who message me saying that they are having doubts in their faith they are wondering if Islam is in fact the true religion because they do not find this sense of peace because they are really feeling oppressed in this so-called peaceful religion. And it's only after some discussion we are able to build an understanding that what's happening to them is not to do with the religion, but it is to do with the culture. And in fact, I want to specifically talk about an incident that happened to someone who I know of. She is a very, very smart sister, mashallah. And if I'm not mistaken, she wanted to pursue medicine and become a doctor. Then her father said that before she goes ahead and follows her dream or something that she is passionate about, he would have a discussion with the scholars so he went to his local masjid, I believe, and spoke to the scholars and said about his daughter's intention to do medicine. And after some serious discussion, they have concluded that it is best for this particular sister to not pursue her education because she will be exposed to a lot of fitna, let alone become a fitna because she would be in mixed gatherings and whatever reasons that they gave and bottom line is his sister was not allowed to pursue her dream although it is something so great and i'm sure this is something that would have earned a lost pleasure a lot and the sister also had to face with uh 
coping with this betrayal because from a really young age she was told that she will be given a chance to pursue her dreams and she was encouraged to take straight A's in school what not and now when it comes to the point where she has to decide what she's going to do with her life the doors of opportunity are shut and there are other sisters who are being told you know do whatever you want but after you get married and then when it comes to the topic of marriage and where she is filtering out to choose this individual who will be more supportive of her dream and unfortunately they are not very common you know because they're talking about rare gems and when she keeps rejecting a number of proposals because she feels that it is not going to be in alignment with who she wishes to be she's emotionally blackmailed or put in a very negative space by saying statements like if you keep rejecting Allah will close doors upon you you know your proposals will keep coming only for some time and then the doors will shut because you're being ungrateful by not accepting what is coming to you in the sense saying that you got to choose this so-called life partner even though you are not happy with it because this doors will be open only for a small amount of time and i'm saying this because i specifically had a sister who has said this and she was so affected by it because she really did not like this guy who the family was trying to make her accept because she just did not connect with him and it really took some deep conversations to make her come out of this negative mentality saying that she needs to be happy with whatever is coming her way even though it does not align with her happiness because the most disliked permissible thing in Islam is a divorce so you want to make sure that you are making the best decision at least the one that feels right for you when you are stepping into marriage i'm not saying that divorce is not an option or that if you are divorced you're not a great person there's something problematic with you or after divorce you're not going to have a life that's not what i'm trying to say but what i'm saying is that we need to become more informed so we do not rush towards wrong choices because we feel afraid that we are earning a loss wrath and there are in fact other sisters who do not know any better and they get married and forced to have a kid between one year of marriage because if you do not have kids one year of marriage then what happens is Allah will close your doors upon you it will get harder for you to uh, get a baby after one year which may be true but again it's in the hands of Allah so they force this sister who is in a very vulnerable situation to get a kid even when proper understanding is not established with this stranger who is now her husband they get married they get kids and two years down the line the sister is fed up with her life or sometimes have a kid and go on with a divorce because they are not happy all this needs to come to a stop which is why we need to talk more about it we need to create awareness about it and i feel that this concept was being touched upon in this movie mulan i'm bringing back this movie because as heavily feminist propagated as you might think this is actually a reality in the lives of many sisters which is why when you feel a certain sister is being held back from reaching her true potential and religion is used as a factor to justify then stand up support this vulnerable sister and help her out because i have been in the presence of respected elders who have really shattered dreams of really talented and passionate sisters saying that you need to not have a voice for yourself you need to not have a dream because that's going to obstruct you from becoming a good mother it's going to obstruct you from becoming an obedient wife you're going to bring shame to the family you are going to 
really cause issues in your marriage by being yourself. As absurd as this might sound, these things are being said and we need to become aware of these things. Because guess what? You can follow your dreams and still be a great Muslim. You can have a business for yourself and still have a flourishing marriage. You can be working on several projects and still raise great children who will be leaders of tomorrow. To think that you can have either this or that is poor mindset. You need to have growth mentality. There is a dire need for us to work on something worthwhile. A woman's place does not necessarily have to be restricted to the kitchen and the house chores for her to be a good woman. There needs to be more women who are using their expertise, using their skills that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them to help others out. Because whatever skill that we have been given, whether it is the ability to speak, whether it is the ability to write, whether it is the ability to really generate money and increase the risk so she can help more people through charity and the different projects that she's initiating, she will be questioned about it. And if you are being a barrier in her realizing this potential and the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to her, then you will be held accountable as well. You essentially become a volume when you become the reason that obstructs goodness from flourishing. We need to establish communication in our relationship. You know, if you are a woman, who wants to put all your energy into looking after your house and children, then there is absolutely no problem with it. Nobody is forcing you to go have a personal brand because it's not everyone's cup of tea. But what's important is that you realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish you when you are speaking up for your right. When you are speaking up in order to get support to actualize and develop your God-given gifts and potentials. You do not have to feel like you will fail being a good Muslim, a good wife, a good daughter, a good mother by using your skills and your potentials to help others out. This is a very, very deep topic and I can keep talking about it forever <laughs> but i am going to conclude this video here and i want to do that with two messages number one is do not stop empowering women with just empty statements saying that islam gave rights islam does not oppress women see if your words or your actions directly or indirectly is contributing to the oppression as much as we like to say that islam is not a religion of oppression sadly we tend to use religion or should i say half learnt religion coupled with a lot of ignorance to justify subtly oppressing women, especially in the, way, in the way of not helping them reach their true potential and becoming happy with who they are and the life they are living because they are forced to live by a social narrative. So ask yourself if you are contributing to this oppression. Let's call it out for what it is. I know this might be hard to hear because we do not want to associate Islam with oppression. Well, let me tell you, Islam has nothing to do with oppression. But you using Islam, which in fact is culture, and oppressing women needs to be addressed and it needs to come to an end. Because we do not want sisters moving away from the religion of Allah. We do not want sisters questioning about the justice of Allah. We do not want sisters moving away from the deen of Allah because that is contradicting from them to reaching their true potential. And above all, we do not want sisters having suicidal thoughts because they cannot be Muslim and be who they want to be. Do let me know your thoughts on this topic in the comments below. 
and also i would really appreciate if you leave some pointers or suggestions for topics that i can speak on in future videos inshallah catch you next week till then this is me shamima signing off saying assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh do not forget to subscribe and click the notification bell take care